Well, he's just a few weeks away from officially being the Democratic nominee for the U.S. Senate, so for now we'll call him the presumptive nominee since he's the only candidate. Connor Eldridge, who's challenging incumbent Republican Senator John Bozeman, now joins us. Connor Eldridge, welcome to the program. Back to the program. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Roby. Thanks for having me. You'll be the nominee when? When will this happen? Soon. Soon enough. All right. I want to begin with a quote from Senator Tom Cotton. You're not running against Tom Cotton, but you could be serving with Tom Cotton if you win this November. He uh, was talking about our uh, prison population bill, uh, law enforcement revision bill in Congress this past week. Here's his quote. He said that law enforcement is able to arrest or identify a likely perpetrator for only 19% of property crimes and 47% of violent crimes. If anything, we have an under incarceration problem. You're a former U.S. prosecutor. Do we have an under-incarceration problem? Are we putting too many people in jail? I wouldn't take the, the approach that Senator Cotton took. Um, we have to start by recognizing that we incarcerate too many people in this country. So I disagree with his statement. Um, and I think that this is an issue that he's encouraged a false choice on. And I reject that false choice. You know, we should go hard after the violent criminals in our communities. And I've done that hard work. And I'm proud of law enforcement and the work that they've done. I didn't like the statistic that he cited. I think it's a national statistic. Um, law enforcement works hard to sol solve a lot of crimes in the state, and I'm proud of the work I did to do that with them. Uh, at the same time, I think we need to recognize that nonviolent, first-time drug offenders ought to be treated differently, and there's bipartisan consensus for that. So I would take a different approach, Roby. I would work to accomplish both of those things, uh, improvements to reentry, to programs for kids like the one I started in Western Arkansas, uh, being tough on violent criminals, and we can do both of those things at the same time and actually work to get legislation done uh, rather than just give up on it here in June. So you're, you're talking about nonviolent uh, criminals that we need that there needs to be a little bit more leniency, I guess, in that respect. But are we doing enough for the hardened criminals, the ones that are committing the, the, the heinous crimes? I think we can do more. And that's why the first bill I'll introduce in the U.S. Senate is to put life sentences on the table for all child predators, uh, people who abuse small kids. So I think we can do both, and we should do both, and that's the point. And the divisive rhetoric like this doesn't help that. I wanna go to work to solve problems like this, not to just throw rhetoric out. We need to go harder at the, the violent criminals, uh, life sentences for child predators. At the same time, we need more programs that uh, address the systemic issues that create the high incarceration rates that we have. Let's flip to another thing that is unfolding in your campaign. We've got, um, you've launched a series of videos, two videos, uh, as a matter of fact, that say that John Bozeman, Senator John Bozeman, your challenger, is an enabler of Donald Trump, the presumptive uh, GOP nominee. Is it fair to tie John Bozeman to a guy that he doesn't have any control over what he says, Donald Trump, is that fair to tie him to the GOP presidential nominee like that? It, it is, and, and here's why. Uh, Senator Bozeman is in charge of what he says. And this ad is ultimately about what Senator Bozeman has said or not said about Donald Trump. This race is about leadership. And I've stepped up and called out some hateful, offensive rhetoric that other Republicans, Paul Ryan, Lindsey Graham, John McCain, have all called out. Senator Bozeman has been silent. Uh, that's why this ad is fair. And again, we're on week three and Senator Bozeman's not condemned these comments. Uh, I call on him to step up, to speak out, to be clear with the voters of Arkansas where he stands. That's what I've done, and that's the distinction that this ad draws. Is it an ad or is it an online video? Because I know you get the paid for by disclaimer on there, but I mean, you're not putting any money behind it. I mean, is it getting any traction? It's not something that I hear in a lot of coffee shop buzz, if you want my personal opinion there. Sure. Well, it is an online video, and uh, that's, you know, Fortunately, with, with the way uh, information is consumed, it's gotten a lot of uh, views and attention from that standpoint. So ad, video, we can call it what we want, but the point of it is this race is about leadership. It's about who's going to stand up, speak out uh, against either party, um, and call out anybody in Washington uh, when that's the right thing to do. Senator Bozeman has told me that he only plans on doing one debate this fall, the AETN debate. You had challenged him to a series of, I believe, five town hall style debates. Um, it's clear that that's not going to happen. So what are you going to do in that one particular debate? And are you going to continue on your town hall trek without him? Well, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to do a couple of things in this campaign. Uh, we're going to continue to travel this state. Um, aggressively go to every county, uh, shake hands, listen to people, 
truly listen to the people of this state and talk about issues with them. That's what they want. It's very unfortunate uh, and disappointing that Senator Bozeman's unwilling to do that. Um, I renew my challenge to him. Uh, at the time we did it, it was a debate or a town hall every month. Mm -hmm. One a month I think is reasonable for the people of this state to expect when voting for a U.S. Senator. Um, I call on him again to debate me numerous times. Five would be fine. Uh, <laughs> more would be even better. Well, if you have an internal poll that shows you're up by a large margin, you're not inclined to take uh, a challenger's uh, uh, challenge like that. So, all right, well, we'll see where it goes. Connor Eldridge, always good to have you in studio. Thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate you and best of luck. Thanks, Roby.